right hello um year eight geographers this is miss time marsh here again with your um third lesson uh looking at rio de janeiro in brazil okay um uh, your geography lesson for the week so uh as i said today we're continuing to look at rio this is going to be our last lesson on rio your last lesson geography lesson before half term um, and today we are looking at the favelas in Rio. So our learning question is, what are Rio's favelas like? Um, I've just got a quick do it now here for us. And I've got two photos on the screen. And I want you to try and come up with five questions you have about these photos, okay? At least um, a minimum, a maximum of five, sorry. Five things you'd want to find out about these photos. Okay, so you can pause me and try and write those down now just for a minute um, and then I'll come up with some share some of my own with you okay so some of the questions I came up with I thought about um, where is this uh, when was the photo taken I'd quite like to know so and then thinking about how different would it be now if this photo was taken these photos were maybe taken a long time ago um, who lives um, here who lives in these places um, what are the challenges of living there? Okay, um, what's it like there? I'm just thinking about, it looks quite like dense population, like lots of people you're living in a very small area. It looks like quite poorly built housing, not built kind of um, like a modern skyscrapers or something. It's like a um, informally built using kind of uh, recycled materials, um, uh, cheap materials. Okay, kind of looks like a typical slum which is what a favelas is and this is two photos of favelas okay so I hope there's just a, getting you thinking getting some questions hopefully by the end of this lesson you will know some of the answers to these questions and if not you can probably go try and do some of your own research and find out any answers so what are we learning about today we're learning about life in the favelas in Rio we're going to learn what they are um, how they've grown and where they're found and then we're going to have a look at the main challenges facing people there um, and how the government and people living in those favelas are trying to improve things there. Um, this is really, again, really interesting to learn about. I think it's learning about a different culture, a different country and city, just expanding your geographical knowledge of the world around you and thinking again about the challenges people have there and how they're different or similar to the challenges faced by people here in the UK. All right. Um, also, in this lesson is going to be some chance to practice answering some uh, really common geographical knowledge, uh, geographical questions. We have to describe graphs or describe the distribution of something. OK, so we're going to get there. We're going to have an intro or I've got a video I'd like you to go and watch. We're going to do some describe question practice. We've got a challenges uh, page divider task. We're going to do some uh, good note taking. And then lastly, you're going to go off a chance to do some independent research uh, by yourself if you'd like to. OK, so firstly, what is a favela? So favelas are found in Brazil and a favela is a slum or shanty town located within or on the outskirts of the country's large cities, especially found in Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, which is the largest city in Brazil. Um, a favela typically comes into being when squatters occupy vacant land at the edge of a city and construct shanties or salvage or stolen materials. OK, so that is just a Google definition. Googled it. That's the definition that came up. But I thought it was quite a good one. So favelas are what slums in Brazil are called. And slums um, are informal settlements. OK, they're normally poor. People normally move to a city and they need somewhere to live and they can't afford um, official formal accommodation. Okay, so they um, occupy empty land, okay, or land that's not used for being used for anything else, and they build with whatever materials they can find or they can afford to buy um, a home for themselves and maybe their families. Okay, and over time, these um, settlements grow as more poor people move into a city and need somewhere to live. So um, they're called informal, all right, because they're often illegal. And that means um, they're outside the government's control and protection. There's no one providing services there. There's no one uh, making sure the houses are safe and the safe uh, the streets are clean. A lot of the times, no one trying to protect against crime or anything like that. They're really informal settlements. They are slums, it's often very poor conditions of the people living there. Okay. Um, I want you to get a bit more 
of a feel for um, what life is like in uh, Rio's favelas. <laughs> okay, so I've got a video, the first one here for you. I did try to put it on my PowerPoint. Um, I'll try and share the link if it's possible in the video description. I'll see if I can. Um, but if you just like type this link into another tab or in you on YouTube, if you search inside Rio's favelas, the city's neglected neighborhoods, sorry, it's a bit long, um, into YouTube, it should be then the first search result. It's a video by Vox and it's about nine minutes long. And I want you to pause um, me now and I want you to go and watch that video just to give you a bit more of a feel for uh, what life is like in Rio sl um, slums. And it's quite an interesting video. It gives some historical background to the favelas, says what life is like there for people now. It gives quite a positive view, I would say. It shows some the real opportunities and the real change people um, independent of the government or local authorities are trying to implement there to improve people's lives. But it also does touch on kind of the crime and the challenges in those neighbourhoods. <laughs> okay, so you can go watch that video. Um, as I said here, there is a, it's the second part of a documentary done by Vox. Um, you can watch the first part if you want, it's optional, but they're both really interesting. They're both about Rio. So I do recommend um, watching part one and part two if you've got the time. It'll take you about uh, 20 minutes. They're both about nine minutes long. Um, but go do that now and then please uh, come back to this video, take any notes that you want to. Uh, what are the favelas like in the video? What are the people who live there like? Are there any challenges that you can already see um, to life there that we've learned about? Okay. Okay, so hopefully you've gone and watched that video and really enjoyed it. I'm sorry that I couldn't put it on my screen or anything like that. I did try, but the technology <laughs> is clearly beyond me. So hopefully you understood enough of it um, to get a really good feel for what the favelas in Rio are like. Okay, so before we talk more about what they're like and the challenges, I want to get kind of um, a geographical perspective on how the favelas have grown and where they're found. So we're going to practice two describe questions and describe when we see that command word in an exam question we need to think about saying what we see all right no, don't need to try and explain anything um don't make it overly complicated say what you see three mark question you can keep it quite simple here you can do three points for three marks okay so we've got a lovely graph here that shows between 1950 and 2020 how this would have been a bit of a prediction, I think. I think the graph was produced in 2010 or around then, so this would be predicting. Um, but we can see how the favela population has grown, that's the blue bars, and we can see how the total population of Rio has grown, and that's the orange bars. Okay, and the question is, describe the pattern shown by Rio's favela and total population. Okay, so describe the pattern shown by the graph, basically. And when we get a question like this, I like to use T, right? And that is why I've got the cup of tea to help you remember that. So I like to do a trend, so the T, where you want to kind of be saying the overall pattern. What are the bars doing in this case? Are they increasing? Are they decreasing? Are they fluctuating? Is there no kind of real pattern? Ask yourself those questions. You've got your answer to the first point. You then, once your second sentence is an example, all right? So you want to quote some data from the graph in front of you, okay? to support your first point. So if you said um, the population, the favela population have increased overall, that's your trend. Your example would be, um, what is the increase? So the increase from one point to another. So what was the increase, for example, between 1990 and 2000 for the total population? It increased by 0 0.6 million. Okay, because remember the graphs in millions here, <laughs> right? This is 1.3 to 1.5 persons. <laughs> Um, and then finally, I like to do an anomaly. So an anomaly is something that doesn't fit your um, data, something different that doesn't maybe fit our overall trend. And then this one is quite tricky to come up with an anomaly because there isn't anywhere a year where it may decrease. So I think about um, where there is a sudden increase. Where has it increased the fastest, which maybe hasn't fit the pattern? So for all of these, it's increased by about 0 0.3. So you might want to think about this one between 10, 2010 and 2020, where that increase was suddenly um, a lot bigger. The population was growing a lot faster than it has in previous years. That could be your last point. OK, so I'd like you to try and answer that question now. So it's three sentences, really. Um, follow that pattern, trend, example, anomaly. So whatever you see in a graph in geography, it's asking you to describe it. 
remember T and it'll help you to answer that question. All right, if you fin finish that nice and quickly, have a think about why favelas might have grown. Okay, you can pause me now and answer that question or wait a moment, I'm gonna put some sentence starters up to help as well if you're still feeling a bit stuck. Okay. All right, some sentence starters. And again, now you can just pause and try and fill in those gaps for me. All right, so if I was answering this question, I would say Rio's favela and total population, uh, favela population, total population, maybe more some sense, has increased overall between 1950 and 2020. For example, the favela population increased by, um, let's do from 1980 to 1990, um, increased by 0 0.2 million between 1980 and 1990. Um, the population grew more quickly between 2010 2020, and 2020. Um, I would say maybe increasing, the total population increasing by uh, 0 0.5 million, okay, uh, faster than in previous decades. Nice and simple, um, three easy marks. If you've got those three points down the question, um, describe questions are really straightforward if you remember that kind of um, tactic for how to answer them, all right? Nice and simple. All right, next. Um, I've got another describe question for us to practice here, but this one is a map and it's asking us to describe the distribution of Rio's favelas. And Rio's favelas on this map are shown by these red splotches and they're unauth unauthorised um, settlements. And that means um, a favela, remember they're an informal legal settlement often. All right, so we can see how they're distributed across the city of Rio. Remember we've looked about Copacabana is maybe that richer area of Rio. Uh, Christ the Redeemer, Christ the Redeemer, Christ the Redeemer statue that's symbolising the airport up here. So we want to think about the distribution. It means the spread of something. So where, where are those um, settlements found? Okay, and we can use. It doesn't exactly work exactly the T acronym um, for map questions and distribution questions, but it still can be applied a little bit. So we still want to be doing a trend and in general, where are they found? A big picture. You will want to get more specific, okay? So, for example, something that supports your point, name a specific place where one is found, use your compass directions, explain where that is. Um, you could then do an, the opposite, so a kind of an, a similar to an anomaly, where are there no favelas or where are there um, less, where are there fewer favelas, okay? Um, remember, with whenever we're using maps in geography, we always want to be using our compass directions, so north, um, east, south and west. We never want to be uh, saying the top of the map or the bottom of the map because uh, that is not very good geographical language. Okay, so again, I want you to try and answer this question for me. So pause me again, write a really good answer. Where are the most of those kind of red splotches? Where are they most commonly found? Use Name an example. Um, where are there less? Okay, there are fewer ones. All right, try and answer that question for me now and then we'll go for an answer. So, um, I would start off, I'd say in general, I'm being really general, I'm saying the general trend, uh, the favelas are located um, more commonly in the north of Rio, okay? Close to the airport in the northeast, all right? Uh, but you could make a point, they are however found throughout Rio potentially. Uh, for example, uh, Mare favela is located in the north, close to the airport. Okay, talking about this one here. You can see Com Complexo de Mare is another one. All close to the airport in the north. There's your example set there for you. Okay, um, and then I say there are a fewer favelas in the Copacabana area. Okay, um, and remember it's described. So while we could probably speculate about why we think this is, we're not gonna say, we just need to say there are fewer found in Copacabana. And we know that really is because it's a wealthier area. It's an area where it's already quite built up with formal settlements. There isn't really space um, for any big informal uh, squatter settlements. They normally have to be built on the outskirts of the city or places which aren't, uh, which most people who are rich enough and have a choice wouldn't choose to live. So in areas that are maybe more difficult to live. Um, I've just realised actually that I want to go back and have a talk about this extension question. Just thinking about uh, linking back to our earlier lessons on the opportunities in Rio in particular. 
why do we think the population in favelas has grown? And it talks about this in the video you should have watched as well. I just want you to remember those kind of uh, pull factors to the city. People from poor, poor areas, particularly in rural, so the countryside in Brazil, move to the cities, move to Rio because there's a chance for a better life. There are more job opportunities. There's chance for uh, better health care, potentially, and better education for their children or for themselves. OK, so they move to the city. So it's that migration of poor people that causes the favelas to grow. The migration generally causing the overall population to grow as well. OK, so just getting you to think about that as well. Um, and when we're thinking about the map and where they're located, like I said, they're found not in areas which are already quite built up, are quite uh, rich, affluent areas, but in poorer areas. Or if you think about the pictures we've seen of Rio, um, it's very, very hilly. There's lots of kind of mountain, not mountains, but like big hills in Rio. Often the uh, informal settlements are built on those hills because normal buildings, uh, formal buildings built by the government and by businesses, they don't want to build there because it's uh, harder to build on a big slope and there's lots and lots of heavy rain and storms and it can damage the homes and cause flooding. Okay, they're often built more in industrial areas as well. So around by the airport, it's industrial areas, factories, not a very nice, attractive place to live. So the land is cheap or unused and people can just kind of squat and claim it for themselves. So we've um, watched the video and now I want us to think about what life is like in a squatter settlement a bit more. And I've got two examples of favelas in Rio that I've chosen here. Some pictures of them to uh, kind of illustrate the point as well. You can go look them up um, more for yourself if you want on the Internet. OK, so first we've got Rosina which I think they talk about in the video and they pronounce it like Rosinha. Um, but I'm just going to call it Rosinha because it's easier then to remember how to spell it. And Rosinha is the largest favela in Rio. Okay, It's really, really famous. Um, it's actually a bit of a tourist industry there. Um, it was very, very dangerous. Parts of it still are. Um, but there is a big tourist industry. When you go to Rio, you can take tours around the favela to see what it's like there. Um, so it's the largest favela in Rio, and it's had a population of 75,000 in 2010. So that's like the population of a town, OK? Um, I don't know the population of Hastings, but I think that might be larger than Hastings. But I could be wrong. Someone will have to check for me. Um, many of its residents, OK, work in the wealthy areas of Ipanema and Copacabana. All right, so you can see where it is here. Around where we've got the coast, that's where you've got Copacabana and Ipanema. So the people live... Um, often very poor people live up on the hillside and travel in to work in the hospitality. So in restaurants, in hotels, in um, shops um, to uh, help the uh, to work for like wealthier people in Rio. OK, and then they travel back here where there is cheaper. OK, it's built like many favelas are on a very steep um, hillside. And we're going to talk about how this can be a challenge to uh, people living in favelas in a bit. All right. Um, there's been a lot of improvement in uh, Racine. OK, so they've worked with the council, but they've also people living in the favela have empowered themselves. They've worked really hard themselves to improve life there. OK, so there's lots of homes with electricity. There's homes that have actually been built with brick. So they're not um, built from kind of uh, poor materials that won't last very long. There are schools, there's health services. Um, there's a McDonald's, apparently. So McDonald's are everywhere now. Um, I've had said that there's 90% of the houses in Racine are now built with bricks and have electricity, running water and sewage systems. So that's a big improvement for what was an informal settlement, a slum. There's a lot of work's gone on to improving life there. OK, lots of people have TVs and fridges in their homes. Um, it has its own newspapers and radio stations, a really strong culture um, and community in the favela. All right. Um, people have worked very hard to improve life there for themselves, for their families and friends. OK. Um, Santa Marta, by contrast, is a less improved favela. OK, so parts of it have been improved, but many homes more than, so than in Rosina are still basically shacks. They're made from plastic sheets like you see here. Uh, you've got kind of um, really temporary looking housing that doesn't look like a proper a brick home okay um 
many homes still have an illegal electricity connection if they have electricity at all. So it means they're plugging into the mains um, illegally to kind of um, access electricity. There's uh, no very limited sewage. So we talked about that last time, the kind of uh, sanitation and services in Rio when we talked about the challenges generally. So that applies particularly in favelas. Um, so waste is running through the streets. And that's obviously a disease risk and generally not very nice for people to have to be near um, and be near their home. OK, so we can see here from this that favelas are really contrasting um, places. They're not all the same. They're not always um, really horrific poverty stricken places they have they have really strong communities they have really strong culture they have people there who've worked really hard and hopefully this came across in the video as well to improve life for themselves and for other people okay but there are really really big challenges to overcome as we see in Santa Marta and still in parts of Racina okay there, there is crime there is lack of um, access to services okay um, there is the lack of good quality housing it all makes um, life really challenging for the people who've moved often to Rio from other areas, not necessarily born there, um, to improve their lives, okay? And for people who've lived in these favelas and grown up in them, okay, to then try and improve their lives without access to maybe education um, compared to someone who lives in a more affluent, a richer area, okay? Um, so I want us to have a look now um, in more detail at the challenges specifically found in squatter settlements in favelas in Rio. Okay, and I want you to try and take some really good notes and keep practicing that summarizing that we've been doing in these last, um, in the last two lessons as well, where we aren't just kind of copying notes in a PowerPoint, but you're trying to really take the key point and write that and not have to write loads and loads and loads because then you remember it a lot more clearly. Okay, helps you a lot more. So what I'd like you to do is divide your page into four. And we're gonna have four challenges that we're looking at. So I want you to divide your page into four, so half and then half again. And you can have construction in one corner, crime, health and services. All right, one in each corner, write the little heading if you want to. Um, like we did last lesson as well, I'd really like to kind of dual code and so match an image with the notes that we're taking. And that will help you remember it more. So you could try and draw a picture to go alongside your notes for each challenge. And we're gonna have, um, we're gonna go through each challenge. I'm gonna talk about them. Um, I want you to try and make some notes to summarize the key point I make about each one. You can try and do a little bit more research if you found one particularly interesting. All right, and then I want, we're gonna practice um, evaluating those different challenges, saying which one we think is the biggest challenge to uh, people living in the favelas, okay? Um, and why we think that it's justifying our opinion. So, firstly, um, again, I'll also say I'm putting notes up on the screen. If you need to pause the video to catch up with writing your notes, um, also you can listen and then write, please do so. All right, so construction, first of all. So um, houses in favelas are often really poorly constructed. They're built illegally from basic materials such as plastic sheets or broken bricks. All right, um, many favelas are built on steep slopes. You can see how um, kind of steep they are in the photo here. Um, this is really dangerous because uh, Rio uh, is in Brazil. We get a lot of rain there. Um, there are a lot of big storms. What you've had is big storms come and the homes are literally washed away by landslides that the uh, storms and the heavy rain cause. So I've got an example um, that I found here. So in 2010, 224 people were killed. 13,000 lost their homes when um, a landslide uh, swept them away. Okay, so it's really awful. This also makes it really difficult um, to build roads because the slopes are so steep. This is why the land was vacant. No one wanted to live there because it was too hard to build roads, it's too hard to build proper housing. So it was left to the poor, to squatters, to kind of claim for themselves. All right, and they built these homes. Um, but now they're not built properly. A lot of them time they can't afford to build them properly. Um, and they're at risk of these landslides. Okay, so that's construction. That's one challenge in Rio. Second challenge we're gonna look at is crime. So um, I think Rio and the favelas in particular have been really famous for the amount of crime and for kind of drug gangs that operate within the favelas. Um, and the favelas has been really lawless places. A lot of been a lot has been done, and you can look at this when we do our kind of own improvement research.
by the government of Rio and Brazil, um, having really, really strict, tough policing units that they basically send in to um, into favelas, and they call them pacifying units, and they basically go in, um, and they have it's 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 kind of awful. You can there are some good videos on it actually, but um, check that you find them appropriate because they really really tough policing with a uh, proper proper guns to kind of combat the gangs that are there huge very very strict drug laws to um kind of pacify the favelas and make them safe okay and make it so the gangs don't have control over them and over the people who live there all right so um like i said there's videos on this sky news has a really good one that you can look for on youtube you just look for a, a kind of favelas drug gangs but again um they can be quite uh, they show guns, so just just like warning there before watching. Um, so there's a high murder rate in the favelas, so 20 per 1,000 people. And I tried to look up the UKs as a comparison, and we're um, less per 1,000 people. We're about 0 0.1, maybe, yeah, so really, really small comparison, 20 per 1,000. I don't want to like scare people, but that's um, if we think about the population of our school, it's 1,500 pupils. So if the population of our school, that would be 25 murders um, per St. Leonard's population. Okay, it's a lot of people being killed because of the high crime rate, and that all links to the drug gangs and the violence that dominates in the favelas. And despite them sending in these police to try and um, end these, the control of these drug gangs and make the favelas safe. All right, this is um, this has been limited success in some places because uh, people think the police are unnecessarily violent, okay, and often corrupt as well. So they might actually work for the gangs or just be in it for themselves, uh, for extorting, taking money from the residents of the favelas rather than actually making it safe. But there has been massive progress, and this is when we see kind of Racina. They've made massive progress here to make it safe. For people who live there all right so that's crime big challenge next one services so we talked about this last time in the context of like the whole of rio but now looking in specifically in uh favelas so in non-improved favelas so this is where the government um people haven't worked together to improve life there um you have a situation where 12 around 12 percent of homes have no running water over 30 percent have no electricity and around 50% have no sewage. Okay, so really, really large numbers still don't have access to electricity or um, sewage or water. Those kind of basic necessities, I bet you couldn't go a whole day without using all of them. You wouldn't be able to flush your toilet. You wouldn't be able to go get a drink from the tap. You wouldn't be able to turn your um, lights on. Okay, um, so lots and lots of homes. This is what this um, picture is showing here, actually. It's the electricity pylon. Uh, many homes connect to the electricity illegally, okay, so they have access to it. Um, and they often do the same with drinking water. They obtain it by tapping into a city main. Okay, so again, this is illegal. They don't have it to their home. But taps are often at the bottom of uh, steep oh, steep slopes, okay? So they have to make journeys down to the bottom of the hill and back up again, again multiple times to collect enough water for themselves, their family, their community. OK, so that makes life really challenging if you're having to spend time going to like fetch water to survive rather than being able to work or go to um, concentrate on your education, potentially. OK. And finally, health. All right. So high population density. So remember, population density is the number of people living in an area. So normally measured in kilometres squared. Um, and high population density is around 37,000 per kilometre square. That's really, really dense. There's lots of people living in a small area. Um, this is an important thing to consider because when you have lots of people living in a small area, it makes things like diseases um, harder to control the spread of. Um, they spread a lot more easily. It's harder to have kind of good hygiene, um, good health of your population. There's high infant mortality rates. So that's the number of children dying. It's 50 per 1,000, all right? So limited access to healthcare uh, because maybe it's private and they can't afford it uh, means that children um, potentially die unnecessarily, very, very sadly. Um, waste can't be disposed of, so this links to our lack of uh, sanitation and sewage, all right? So this increases the risk of disease. If there's open sewage uh, running down the street, that's dirty. That's going to increase the risk of diseases like cholera, all right? 
um, which travels in the water. Uh, people don't have uh, rubbish collectors. They don't have bin men come to the house to uh, pick up the rubbish and take it away. There's nowhere for it to go. So they just dump it on the street. They often try to burn it to get rid of it. Um, that's a risk to houses built from wood. So you might have some house fires, bad for your health. Uh, the smoke, obviously they're not burning things. Well, no smoke is good for you, but they're burning things that are also maybe toxic or dirty. And that smoke is really, really harmful to your lungs. OK. Um, so four pretty massive challenges in squatter settlements. OK, so these are people who've moved to Rio. They're trying to improve their lives and they're faced by these massive challenges. They're at the risk of being murdered. They're living in homes that could be swept away in a storm. They have to illegally tap electricity. They don't have access to healthcare. It makes really life really challenging. So it makes it really even more impressive that so many of these people have improved their lives and so many of these favelas have been massively improved by the people who uh, live there, who've worked really hard, often without support from the uh, local government to improve the living situation there. OK, um, so again, yeah, pause me if you need to finish your notes. And then once you've finished, I want to number your boxes one to four with one being the challenge that you think is the biggest, the biggest barrier to people in uh, favelas in Rio uh, being able to improve their lives, okay, and live happily, healthily, and safely. And then four being the challenge which is going to have the least impact, is the easiest to overcome. All right, again, there are no right or wrong answers here. The main reason I want you to do that is because then I want you to justify your decision. I want you to say why you think construction potentially um, is the biggest challenge to people in Rio. I want you to write a sentence explaining why. So if you have said construction, I think that construction, which is, say what construction is, is the biggest challenge in Rio because, and say why you think that, okay? That is the important skill that I want you to learn here. That's where we get more marks, where we can justify our answers, all right? You have to support your argument, okay? You can't just say stuff without backing it up. Okay, so um, pause me again so you can finish your answer. Make sure you've ranked them one to four and then written a couple of sentences underneath saying why you think whatever you've put as the biggest challenge it is. And you can potentially do why whatever you've put as number four is the um, least challenging. Okay. All right. And then um, next thing we're going to do, um, I didn't want to do more talking at you this lesson. So I thought we'd try and set up some independent research. OK, something for you to go off and do by yourself. And you can kind of try and make it more interesting for yourself by choosing an area that you're already interested in. So we've seen that there are lots and lots of challenges in Rio um, favelas, OK, for the people living there. Um, and these favelas have existed for a really long time and they still exist now and there's still challenges there. So I just want to give us some background of how the government and people there have gone about improving things. So until 1980, Rio's government did not acknowledge favelas existence. This meant they didn't show on any maps or anything of Rio. The government pretended they weren't there because they were illegal, informal settlements. The government had no control over them. So in the mid 1980s, urban planners decided to try and help the, oh dear, there's some serious type, uh, type, typo that I don't know what I was supposed to say, uh, to help the citizens in the favelas, I'm going to say. So instead of destroying the favelas, this would have just left um, residents homeless. They did have very limited housing for them to move into, so they couldn't really destroy them. Um, improvement projects were designed to upgrade and provide services to favelas. OK, so they decided um, to try and improve life in in the favelas rather than destroying them and starting again. These projects are ongoing. So it starts in the mid 1980s, still ongoing today, still favelas where they're very unsafe. That population is still growing. They're still poor moving into the favelas today. So your task is to research how the government has gone about improving things in um, favelas, OK? So I want to use the internet to research answers to this question. How is Rio working to improve life in Rio's favelas? Um, for example, you can look up the favela Vero project um, and how it's worked in Complexo de 
Palimo, I'm sorry for my pronunciation, which is complex to Alemio, Alemia, I, honestly, um, no, no good at Portuguese, um, is a favela in Rio. And this is one of the projects that Rio has introduced to improve the favelas. OK, this is what they call it, Favela Bero project. All right. So I want you to try and find out what improvements have been implemented. So I'll give you a hint. So they've done things um, like improving access to water supplies. They've done things uh, like building uh, proper roads so they can get people get in and out more safely. Um, they've built new kind of health and education facilities in the favelas. Um, and they've allowed people to do things like buying their homes so they own it legally and giving them kind of loans to do that, loans to buy materials to improve their home as well. So it's not so um, built from such poor materials. All right. So I want you to kind of research some improvements that have been done. Try and find examples of where they've done it. So, for example, what have they done in LMAO? OK. Um, what problems remain? OK, so after they've done these improvement projects, what problems remain? So um, I my example is rent increases so often um, when they improve the favelas um, they become um, more desirable places to live they're often kind of quite close to areas where there's lots of work all right so rent increases um, as and that means the poorest people can't then afford to live there and are pushed out again okay um, the fact maybe that they don't maintain some of the new things they build so they build kind of new health centers they build new roads um, but then they're just left to go into disrepair again. Uh, you can look about the n amount of money that um, is still needed to improve the favelas. OK, um, and then I've given you one website just to sort uh, to sort uh, start you off. Um, it's BBC Bite Size. So if you just Google BBC Bite Size and favela um, improvements, it probably come up saving you have to type it all in. But again, I'll try and share the link in the description when I post this video. Um, as well and if you try and find out so what improvements have been implemented what problems remain I want you to try and then think whether it's been a success or not so conclusion to your question um, has Rio improved life in the favelas or not why has it been successful or why has it been a failure okay so this is quite a big ask it's potentially quite like a, a lot of research but try and uh, do some googling choose trustworthy websites okay um, watch some YouTube videos uh, think how has life improved in um, in favelas what has been done to cause that improvement all right um, pause if you need any more time uh, on that uh, answer and like I said you can um, you can present your findings as a fact file as bullet points um, as a mind map as a poster um, I don't mind. Just try and find out something that interests you. How have they overcome uh, the challenges in the favela? OK, uh, anything that you think is interesting um, and expanding your kind of geographical knowledge. But remember, to be a geographer, you need to be critical. You need to evaluate how successful or unsuccessful these improvements have been. OK, so summary for you. Um, We've seen today that Rio's favelas have grown um, as rural migrants have moved to the city because, as we saw in previous lessons, there are better job and life opportunities in Rio than in other poorer areas of Brazil. Uh, we've seen the challenges in favelas. OK, hopefully you saw some in the video. You saw you've made some good notes on the challenges. You've decided which one you think is worse. We've seen they've had high crime rates, lack of proper housing, lack of services and poor health care. OK, um, Rio's government has worked for the last 40 years to improve life in Rio's favelas. Many have improved, but many people still live in poor and dangerous conditions. OK, and that's your last bit of research for you to go and do by yourself. Um, what were those improvements? How have they worked? How successful have they been? OK, if you have any issues or further questions about this topic, please, please get in touch. Uh, with me, Miss Hindmarsh, there's my email, okay, uh, Mr. Johnson, um, or your own geography teacher, I put everyone's email here on the slide for you, okay. Um, so thank you very much for watching, I uh, hope you found the activities interesting, I hope you've learned something new, um, I hope this has got you thinking about what life in uh, favelas is like, and hopefully you can go do some research, or you've done some research now on 
how they're trying to improve life uh, for the last 40 years in the favelas and why that is so challenging. Okay, thank you very much. Stay safe. Bye-bye.